Hello everyone, I am Tanya Pandey, here with your weekly update of important judgments on courts this week at Live Law. The Supreme Court set aside a judgment of the Kerala High Court, which directed filling up of additional vacancies of Munsip Magistrate posts from the current rank list over and above the notified vacancies. The High Court had affirmed a judgment of the single judge by holding that appointments to the post of Munsif Magistrate could be beyond the probable number of vacancies advertised in the notification inviting applications. The bench, comprising Justice D.Y. Chandrachur and Justice Indira Banerjee, while dealing with Rule 7 Clause 1 of Kerala Judicial Service Rules 1991, observed that to allow the concept of probable number of vacancies to trench upon future vacancies which will arise in a succeeding year would lead to a serious constitutional infraction. We are extremely disappointed at the way the government is handling the farmers' protests and farm laws, said Chief Justice Bogde. Several key developments have taken place in the case this week. The central government has filed their affidavit claiming that the protest is limited to only one section of the country and that the majority of the farmers are not only happy with the legislations but are finding these legislations to be progressive and in their interest as substantially they are having more than one option to choose from. The Supreme Court, however, has stayed the implementation of three farm laws. The CJI-led bench has directed for minimum support price system as it existed before the amendment to continue and directed that no farmer be dispossessed or deprived of his title. The court constituted a committee for the purpose of listening to the grievances of the farmers and to make recommendations. Representatives of all the farmers' bodies, whether they are holding a protest or not, and whether they support or oppose the laws, have been directed to participate in the deliberations of the committee and to put forth their viewpoints. The committee has to submit a report containing its recommendations within two months from the date of the first sitting. The first sitting shall be held within 10 days from the date of the order. A writ petition has been filed in the Supreme Court against the new and updated privacy of WhatsApp. WhatsApp introduced its new privacy policy through which it scrapped their opt-out policy and from now on, the users will have to compulsorily consent to share their data with Facebook and its group companies for using the platform. The petitioner submitted that the updated privacy policy is violative of Article 21 of the Constitution of India and of the statutory scheme envisaged under the Information Technology Act 2000. Petitioner has prayed for WhatsApp to be directed to retract their updated privacy policy of January 2021 with immediate effect. Virtual hearings, though forced by the global pandemic, are as good as open court hearings, the bench headed by CJI S.A. Bobde observed. It clarified that the decision to convene court proceedings via video conferencing is taken after extensive deliberations with medical experts. Justice Yu Yu Lalit has recused himself from a matter pertaining to an appeal filed by the state of Karnataka against a Karnataka High Court order which struck down the 25% domicile reservation at the National Law School of India University. Justice Lalit informed the council present that he had represented a member of the governing board previously and would not be able to hear the appeal. Accordingly, the court directed for the appeal to be listed before another bench. A bench comprising Chief Justice of India S.A. Bobde, Justice A.S. Bopanna and Justice V. Ramasubramanian took Suomoto cognizance on the issue of remediation of polluted rivers. It observed that one of the major causes of water pollution was the discharge of non-treated or partially treated municipal waste and affluence of various states and cities. This action came while the Supreme Court was hearing a petition filed by the Delhi Jal Board on the requirement of urgent intervention of the Apex Court in form of directions on the Haryana government 
for seizing the discharge of untreated effluents, resulting in a rise of ammonia levels in the river water. In an appeal filed by a developer against an order passed by National Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission, directing it to refund the amounts deposited by the apartment buyers on account of the inordinate delay in completing the construction and obtaining the occupation certificate, the bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachud, Indu Malhotra and Indira Banerjee has held that the incorporation of one-sided and unreasonable clauses in the apartment buyer's agreement constitutes an unfair trade practice under Section 2, Clause 1, Subclause R of the Consumer Protection Act. The bench also observed that the developer cannot compel the apartment buyers to be bound by one-sided contractual terms contained in the apartment buyer's agreement. Entirely illegal construction. Supreme Court directs demolition of a hotel cum restaurant built in forest land in Himachal Pradesh. The appeal was filed by Himachal Pradesh Bus Stand Management and Development Authority against the NGT order directing demolition of a hotel cum restaurant in the bus stand complex at McLeod Ganj in Himachal Pradesh. The court observed that the environmental rule of law at a certain level is a facet of the concept of rule of law. NGT has found that the bus stand complex seriously disturbs the ecology of the area in which it has been constructed and also violates the provisions of the Forest Conservation Act. A full bench judgment of the Kerala High Court was set aside and the Supreme Court held that cooperative societies registered as primarily agricultural credit societies are entitled to deductions under Section 80P2A1 of the Income Tax Act, even when they may also be giving loans to their members which are not related to agriculture. The ground that allegations of fraud are not arbitrable is a wholly archaic view which has become obsolete and deserves to be discarded. The Supreme Court observed while holding that the allegations of fraud with respect to the invocation of bank guarantee are arbitrable since they arise out of disputes between parties inter se and are not in the realm of public law. The court held that if it is clear that a civil dispute involves questions of fraud, misrepresentation, etc. under the Indian Contract Act and or the tort of deceit, the mere fact that criminal proceedings can or have been instituted in respect of the same subject matter would not lead to the conclusion that a dispute which is otherwise arbitrable ceases to be so. Consensual affair is not a defence against a charge of kidnapping a minor, the Supreme Court held. The bench observed that the same would amount to surreptitiously undermining the protective essence of the offence of kidnapping while disposing of an appeal filed by one Anwar Singh whose conviction under sections 363 and 366 of the Indian Penal Code was upheld by the Gujarat High Court. Supreme Court directs reopening of Anganwadi centres outside containment zones, directs to ensure nutritional support to pregnant women, lactating mothers and children in accordance with the statutory requirements of the National Food Security Act 2013. The centres had been closed due to the pandemic. The court directed that the decision of not opening the Anganwadi centres can only be taken after proper consultation with the State Disaster Management Authority in any area situated outside the containment zones. The court also directed the respondents to create a complaint redressal mechanism in each district to ensure the compliance of the Act. Extraordinary rigged jurisdiction cannot be utilised by a litigant only to take chance and then to seek recourse to the other remedy after failing in its attempt on the basic merit of the case before the High Court. The Supreme Court remarked while dismissing an appeal filed against the judgment passed by High Court of Judicature at Hyderabad. Builders' demand for extra money on account of alleged increase in sale area is illegal. Supreme Court affirms NCDRC order by dismissing the builder's appeal. 
The NCDRC in August 2020 had helped the builders demand to be legal and rule the issue in favour of the home buyer. Supreme Court slaps rupees 25,000 costs on Gujarat government for its lethargy and incompetence of filing SLPs belatedly. The bench, headed by Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaur, passed identical orders in about three SLPs filed by the state of Gujarat on Wednesday. Is appointment of arbitrator by person who is disqualified to be an arbitrator as per Section 12 Clause 5 of the Arbitration Act valid? Supreme Court refers issue to larger bench. A bench comprising Justices R.F. Nariman, Naveen Sinha and K.M. Joseph doubted the correctness of the decision in Central Organization for Railway Electrification delivered on December 17, 2019, wherein a division bench comprising of Justices R. Bhanumati and A.S. Bopanna had held that such appointments by an authority who is disqualified from being an arbitrator can be valid depending on the facts. Whether non-payment of stamp duty on commercial contract will invalidate arbitration agreement, Supreme Court refers issue to a constitutional bench. A three-judge bench of the Supreme Court observed that non-payment of stamp duty on the commercial contract will not invalidate the arbitration agreement. Disagreeing with two earlier judgments in this regard, the bench referred the issue to the constitutional bench. Rules contradict sections. Supreme Court on Prevention of Cruelty to Animal Rules 2017 allows impediment of interveners. In a plea filed by Buffalo Traders Welfare Association, the validity of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animal Rules 2017 has been challenged as being unconstitutional in nature. The rules allow authorities to seize vehicles used in cattle transportation and send the animals to gaushalas or cow shelters. The court observed that animals are the source of livelihood for people and that the rules are permitting to take away animals even before conviction. A bench headed by Justice Ashok Bhushan required retired Andhra Pradesh High Court Judge Justice V. Ishwaraya to file an affidavit admitting that he did enter into an alleged private phone conversation with a suspended district Principal magistrate of Andhra Pradesh. The Andhra Pradesh High Court has directed an investigation by retired Supreme Court Justice R. V. Ravinder into it, against which order Justice Ishwaraya has moved the top court. That's all for this week. I hope you found this information useful. I'll be back again with more updates. Until then, have a wonderful day. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.